Welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to be doing a side-by-side -side comparison of the Turbo Boost actuators that you can find on a PX Ford Ranger. The one on my left is a genuine Garrett one and the one on my right is an eBay special one. The Garrett ones you can't actually buy anywhere, you have to buy the Turbo to replace them. Um, with these Chima special ones, they're about $80 online, which you can buy off eBay or other sort of various online stores. And I'm going to be delving in, taking them apart, and just seeing what the major sort of construction differences are inside, how they're built. And it seems to be a pretty common problem on the Rangers because I did a video about a year or so ago um, on the replacement of these, and it's up to 50,000 views. So I think this will sort of make a good video of whether you're deciding whether you should just buy a genuine turbo or whether you should just buy a replacement actuator because you can't buy these separately. You have to buy these with the actual turbo itself. So at a first glance, um, you can see clear with the Garrett one, it's made in Germany, whereas this one here is made in China. Even though it doesn't have that printed on there, it actually come from China. That's where I purchased it from, from an eBay store that imports these from China. Well, it was actually a Chinese store and they posted it to Australia. Um, but at a first glance, they look very similar in sort of construction. Um, not many sort of notable differences between the two. Sort of look very much similar from every direction that you look at them. Weight wise, I'd say they probably weigh the same as well. There's no sort of noticeable difference in weight between the two. Um, very similar in weight and appearance. Um, as you can see that line on the right there is slightly different to the Garrett one. Um, but yeah, let's start taking them apart and see what they look like inside. Alright, so we seem to have all the clips off from the genuine Garrett one. Now it's time to uh, open it up. And... First up, we'll just look at the circuit board here. Um, nothing really too much to see here. It all sort of looks like it should, I guess. I'm not much of an electrician, but yeah, looks very, uh, very much as it should be. And in here, we've got the actual motor itself. Um, in there, we've got the cogs and the gears. So these are what normally fail in the um, in the actuators there, these wear out and this actuator here, well this cog here is no longer being able to turn by that worm gear there and essentially what happens is it just fails and it's when you have to buy a new one. It's not actual motors that fail but it's these plastic worm gears inside that fail and yeah that causes these to basically just get stuck in an up or down position and come up with a fault code on your dash and put your car in the limp mode. So anyway, I'm gonna take apart the uh, Chinese one and see how it compares. All right, so circuitry. I have the two side by side. Quite different. Um, the genuine Garrett one on the left seems to have a lot more sort of chips and little diodes and that inside. Whereas the China one looks to be very, very basic in design. So there's a bit of a side by side comparison. Now if we have a look at the motor and the gearing, it actually seems to be um, very, very similar. So look at that. Different part numbers there on the actual motors, so it looks like it does use a different motor. Um, but on the inside, we can see the, uh, the worm gears. They seem to be a very similar set of construction as compared to the uh, genuine Garrett one. Um, main notable difference is this here. I'm not sure what that there's for, but obviously the China spec one doesn't come with that. Um, the Garrett one does. 
So, yeah, if we just have a look, a bit of a close up on the two. Very, very similar indeed. So yeah, build-wise, um, from what I can see, this one does feel, the one on the left does feel a little bit tighter than the China spec one, but only, but only very, very minor sort of tightness there. Um, but all in all, very, very similar construction. So I have that two side by side, and you can see the two chips. So yeah, the deciding factor, should you go an aftermarket one over a genuine one? Well, I would absolutely. Um, as you can see, there's not really that much of a difference inside. They feel pretty much the same sort of quality as each other. Um, slight differences in the uh, actual motor there, as you can see, but only very minor. Um, but as in the build quality, I think they're just as good as the factory genuine Garrett ones. So yeah. There is, as I mentioned earlier, slight differences in the actual chips there, which I'm not sure why. Um, but besides that, they're pretty much identical to each other. As I mentioned earlier, the only sort of really thing you gotta be concerned about is the uh, worm drive and the gear inside there. They're the ones that, when they wear out, they're the ones that fail. And from what I can see here, they're pretty much exactly the same as each other. Um, so I'm not going to go any further into dissecting these because these are still two good working actuators. So I'm not going to let these go to waste. They'll come in handy, I'm sure, down the track somewhere to someone. Um, but all in all, I'm going to wrap up the video there. Hope you enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up if you like it. And I hope that answers some questions in regards to whether you should go an aftermarket turbo actuator. Till next time, see you later.